All right, okay. So hello, dears. No, medyo, medyo I'm stressed. May mga nawawala dito. But anyway, all right. So again, hello, dears. No, welcome to uh, yet again another pre-recorded lecture in our immunology and serology class. No, and for this lecture, what we're going to discuss is again the second reactions, uh, the second type of reactions rather that we are going to uh, that we are that we need yes to be aware of no and to be to fully internalize. Uh, because again, this is one of the basic concepts, uh, one of the basic reactions uh, to which most of our immunoassays are based from. All right? Okay? And um, so we have already discussed the first type of reactions, which are uh, your, which is your precipitation reactions, no? So, medyo ano yun, medyo challenging then. <laughs> and the second type, what we're going to discuss now is the agglutination reactions. Now, th these type of reactions are not only seen um, in immunology and serology. Uh, na lesson or na laboratory ba or in the or na, na topic we will also discuss this in your uh, blood banking all right immunohematology and also um sa hema siguro na ba agglutination <laughs> but mainly mainly uh, is and bb all right so uh, for bb i think you'll focus more on blood typing but here we're going to discuss the different types of agglutination reactions okay all right so again so recall what we have discussed in the precipitation reactions these two reactions are again the basic mga reactions or one of the one of the uh, or the the signs no of antigen antibody reactions that um, we now exploit again muna akong term or that we now use so that we can create a lot of immuno immunoassays and eventually because of these immunoassays diba we think a lot of people behind these uh, uh, we can now diagnose diseases all right and we can also detect uh, mga antibodies no autoantibodies and even antigens all right okay so again this is agglutination reactions all right so we'll start first with what is agglutination uh, recall in your precipitation, right, uh, we have differentiated between precipitation and agglutination. And the main difference is that precipitation involves soluble antigens and soluble antibodies. So when you say soluble, they are both in solution, all right? Um, so they are not necessarily, your antigens uh, primarily are not necessarily bound to a carrier molecule or a large molecule, no? Whereas for your agglutination, the antigens are now particulate or could, could be cellular, all right? So this time, the antigens are much more, again, I'd like to think about it um, in terms of size, no? Okay, size matters, Charot. In terms of size, uh, the antigens now are quite, in a way, larger, in a way, no? And must nakabind sila of something solid, all right? Ayan, so... Uh, an example of particles, you have erythrocytes, bacterial cells. So these two, the antigens can be naturally found, all right? Naturally found, meaning they are really found there, no? Uh, example, on, erith on erythrocytes or RBCs or bacterial cells. Or if not, you could also um, put them, all right, on surfaces of inert carriers. An example of that is latex. You have also charcoal, whatever. So um, throughout the course of our lessons, no, you'll uh, be introduced to the different types of tests uh, in diagnosing diseases that utilize mga inert carriers, like mga latex uh, tests, diba? I'm, I'm sure you have heard of that, mga latex agglutination tests, no? mga charcoal agglutination, whatever. So uh, the main point of that is they serve as your carrier, diba? Recall in our in, uh, antigen antibodies, diba, na, uh, na, sana? na lecture, okay? <laughs> Alright, so ayan. So again, the main point lang, or the main takeaway here is that the antigens, primarily the antigens, are of insoluble in origin at this time. So they are much more, in a way, again, I'd like to think, ha? Para maragdi ko malibog, they are much more bigger, uh, that they're, they're much bigger, and that they are really um, put, or they are on the surface of something that is really uh, solid. Okay, so solid ang antigen. Example, again, cells, erythrocytes, bacterial cells, so naturally occurring, or it could be that you put them in inert carriers, so you then... Um, uh, so, dili na siya natural, no? Because again, you put it on inert carriers. Uh, generally or naturally, the inert carriers do not have the antigens. So, imurang gibutang dito para murang makasakay tong antigen dito. Okay? Para mas makita ang reaction. Okay? Alright, ayan. And so, the same, your antibodies are known as your agglutinins. Okay, this time because again, they are now, um, we're now focused on agglutination. Alright? And uh, these are antibodies that are capable of uh, producing reactions, visible reactions, agglutination. 
which, requ uh, which results to visible agglutination, uh, visible aggregation, or that's your agglutination. Um, and these are actually larger complexes uh, in the presence of uh, specific antibodies. So um, agglutination mismo, guys, you can see it in the naked eye, all right? If they react, you can see it. Example, same blood typing. Katung kumpul kumpul or clumping, that is agglutination. Diba? You can see it in the naked eye. Uh, it's, not para, it's not the same with precipitation. Uh, you need like an agarose gel no, for passive immunodiffusion or electrophoresis or um, uh, you know, turbidimetry to detect precipitation or to measure precipitation. Uh, for agglutination, because again, the antigens are much, much larger and that uh, we then let it react with antibodies, uh, so mas maklaro ang reactions to the point that makita na siya sa naked eye, alright? So you don't need, again, extra material parehas sa uh, precipitation na kailangan ng agarose gel, kailangan ng electrophoresis, yun, Anna. Alright? Okay, ayan. So, of course, 1896, dili mawala ang a little history. So kids sa may persons uh, behind uh, this reaction, diba? as mentioned ako guys, ang IS ug BB talaga, ang maraming history. So munang ang first topic ninyo sa inyong lecture classes, if I'm not wrong, kay history. <laughs> because again, uh, there are a lot of people behind this um, and it's really interesting. I mean like I'd like to, uh, I like to look at it uh, in a very parang interesting uh, manner because again, these people are behind, no? the geniuses behind these tests no? and like it, it really amazes me how much no of curio how much curious they they are before na naka naka, naka discover gud sila ani and ilang brain cells para murag maka think about ani na maglisod na gani kog discuss maglisod na pud kog tuon ani but sila na kaya nila na mo create no so sana all congrats guys mga forefathers mga founding fathers of our ISNBB all right so for agglutination daming chika uh, we attribute that to Grubber and Durham okay uh they published the first report about the ability of antibody to clump cells based on observations of agglutination of bacterial cells by serum. So as you can see, no, it's really pares ni kinsa sa precipitation na discover si Rudolf Krauss or Cross. Uh, still the same with Grubber and Durham. They focused more on um, bacterial cells talaga and uh, your serum, of course, and then they're, they 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 have reactions, no. So from there they devised or they already know. Uh, or from there, they got the idea na of unse mga sunod na mga steps or unse possible na nahitabo. So that's really interesting. So usually, mag focus sila bacteria because again, I think uh, during those times, ang bacteria pa ang medyo na study juni lang tarong, no? Or mga nana sila idea daan, okay? Or they already started uh, para uh, delving into the world of microbes ani na time. So munang bacteria pa ang medyo ilahang na experimentuhan. Okay. All right. Ayan. And la next, si Widal and Sicard, or Sicard, uh, developed one of the earliest diagnostic tests for detection of antibodies occurring, occurring in typhoid fever, brucellosis, and tularemia. All right. So um, later, also in our um, discussion in the course, no, we'll have a discussion on. Salmonella uh, serology. All right, and you will encounter the Widal or Widal test. Yes, uh, so she Anna, she behind Annie. So aside from typhoid fever, which of course caused by Salmonella, uh, you also have the brucellosis caused caused by brucella and tularemia caused by Francisella, di ba? So mga ella ella. I hope na remember pa na sa back then, no? So yes, dun natin mo delve deeper Anna. But anyway, yes, this is some history background. Um, uh, of this, okay. Now, si Grubber and Durham, guys, specifically, uh, ilahang, ilahang discovery led to uh, the, the use of serology no, as a tool in diagnosing diseases and also uh, eventually led to the discovery of ABO and other uh, important na mga, uh, discoveries or important na mga components sa blood. All right, okay. Ayan. Okay, now we go now to steps in agglutination. As you can see, no, um, it has two main steps. The first one is sensitization. And the second one is lattice, for, lattice formation. So as you can see, quite the same but in a man with precipitation. Um, for the first part, you need sensitization. So of course, you need sa na magtagbo ang antigen and antibody. Or you need first that they react with each other. Alright? So of course, with the antigenic determinants and the antibody na fab. Diba? So you need to react. You need for them to react excuse me, with each other. Alright? And... Again, still the same with precipitation, follows the law of mass action and rapid and reversible. So, recall in our precipitation reactions, uh, diba, the law of mass action, diba, the forward and reverse. So, reversible imuhang reaction. But if avidity increases, no, uh, recall diba, sa reaction, 
sakto pa ba ako ang ano? Uh, ano? ba? Diba? Ayan. So, you have K1 and K2. ba? Diba? That's, uh, again, reversible ang reaction. So, ba? Diba, ang giging dito, as ability increases, so, mas meaning, kung sa'yo pasabot, Ana, as ability increases, mas mo strong na ang complex or ang reactions or the forces that keep the complex intact stronger na. Therefore, it's less chance or lesser chance na uh, for this complex to dissociate or para mabali, ma mabungkag, right? So, therefore, ang K2 mo decrease, alright? And ang imuhang overall K na constant is mo increase, di ba? Kaya that's muni mong formula. So, if mo decrease ni siya, of course, inversely proportional, so mo increase ni, di ba? Na gets lang, law of mass action uh, sa precipitation. Sige, if wala pa, balikin na doon na lecture. <laughs> okay. Alright. So, again, it's rapid and reversible. So, of course, the first step is, of, of course, if wala yung react, wala yung reaction mahitabo, o wala yung antigen and antibody na nag-react or na nag, 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 nag combine Okay? So, that's the first step, sensitization. And the second one is, of course, your lattice formation. So, again, still the same with precipitation. After reacting, no, with the specific uh, antigenic determinants and the fab of the antibodies, no, they now form what we call the lattice formation and a cross-link sila, uh, which now, again, results to the formation of the aggregates or the visible aggregates. And this is now what we see in the naked eye na mga clumping. Okay? <laughs> All right. Ayan. And again, the sum of interactions between antibody and multiple antigenic determinants. Diba? Parehas sa uh, precipitation or reaction na to, mag-combine mag mag -combine ang one antigen and one antibody with another uh, antibody, antigen na po, another antibody, and then mag-form sila og lattice, di ba? A network, lattice network, and then until ma-form sila og visible aggregates, uh, which we now see as your clumping, di ba? And that's now your agglutination. Okay? Alright, so again, here's a picture of sensitization. You have your antibodies, and you have your antigens with multiple determinants, meaning pwedeng daghan ang maka-bind. Maka, uh, Alright? Ayan, so they now combine, Okay? And then, of course, by lattice formation, they now um, rearrange muna. So, kanis pag bind nila, of course, wala pa yung visible reaction. Okay? Because again, wala pa man sila na combine together. Alright? So, because wala pa yung visible reaction, they then rearrange, okay, to now form what we call your lattice formation. And this is now uh, the reason, or this is now what we see. Okay? Multiple na mga inani, alright, uh, na nag-combine-combine, muna na siya itong nakita uh, with the visible eye, which is the aggregation or the clumping, which we term as your agglutination, di ba? Alright, so I hope na gets lang. Ayan, so um, as you can see, no, um, between precipitation and agglutination, they're quite the same. Same, same ragud sila o principle, same ragud sila follow. Ang difference ng yun is the nature of the antigens that are, um, that are involved in the reactions. Di ba? For precipitation, it's soluble. For agglutination, it's insoluble. Okay? Alright, and so mas makita judayon ang reaction uh, or like visible or with the naked eye ang reaction sa agglutination all right okay ayan now here are some factors that can affect the steps in agglutination uh, for the first one sensitization you have first is the nature of the antibody molecule so still the same affinity avidity diba sa to lecture sa precipitation affinity is uh, just one the, the force that binds one antigen and one antibody. Whereas ang ability is the sum of all <laughs> the forces that keep the antigen antibody complex intact. Okay, so tanang tanang forces na na dili ra sa ka antigen o sa ka antibody. So muta kong share di ba na we always aim for the avidity. Dapat strong atong avidity and dapat dili ra affinity ato focus. Ang end goal nato is avidity. So I was like thinking gabi eh, like. So, huh? So, if ability ang kusog, di ba? I think ko, like, naman tayo na-mention po na multivalent antigen with multivalent antibodies. So, oh, multivalent, so meaning daghan kang kabet? <laughs> so, daghan kang, <laughs> daghan kang kaba, kabet and then mag, magpasapasahali na lang mo until mag-precipitate. Mga nga ako mga idea, no? mga wild ideas. But anyway, you get the point. <laughs> ang point lang na ako is the force, di ba? Uh, we always aim for something that is long-term, something that is long-lasting, and that is strong, and that can withstand the test of time. Char! Char! So we go now for ability. <laughs> okay, all right. Ayan, so how does it affect sensitization? Of course, if weak ang imuhang affinity, ability, of course, the sensitization is also weak. So wala kayo mahitabo dahil na sensitization. Okay. Uh, for class or valence, of course, it depends on the type of antibody then. Uh, example, you have IgM. Your IgM has pilaman ka valence, 10 ka buo. 
So therefore, 10 man kabuk yung valence, uh, I hope na remember pa sa meaning valence, meaning the number of binding sites, okay, the number of binding sites ay muhang uh, antibody, di ba? So you have, muna siya yung normal antibody, so di ba, if a normal antibody katong Y, you have 2 kavalence, alright, since your IgM is a pentamer, so 5 ka buo, 5 ka in ani, so therefore 5 times 2 is 10. So 10 yung valence, therefore, um, in mas taas ang chance of binding with a lot of antigens. Alright? So, kay daghan man ang binding sites. Okay? Daghan ang pwedeng kabindan sa imuhang antigens. Alright? Okay, ayan. Okay. And uh, nature of antigen bearing surface, of course, number of epitopes. Let's say if gamay rang epitopes ay muhang antigens. So, of course, gamay po ang chances na makabayin na yun. But if daghan siyang epitopes na multi kato, multivalent na antigen, daghan siyang pwedeng uh, kabayin dan, okay, yahang epitopes, then, of course, that's uh, possible. Okay, na mas, mas, mas taas ang chance of antigen antibody binding. Availability of epitopes, still the same. Whatever, let's say, daghan bitaw siyang epitopes, but these epitopes are not available. Okay, so sila po dila available. Uh, or like these um, epitopes are not of the same configuration with antibody and antigen. Uh, with antibody. So wala yung reaction na mahitabo. So for antigen antibody reaction, mahitabo guys. Ang antigen mismo, ang ilang epitope, no, it's, it's really interesting then, uh, that this epitope um, has the same configuration also with that um, antibody. Alright, because again, your body reacts diba, to the antigen, so mo create po siyang antibody that has the same, in a way, configuration uh, with the antigen sa, imo, sa surface or with the antigen. Yes, kay para um, specific or para mag-fit sila. Diba? So, ina na siya ka-interesting. Okay, alright. Ayan, and lastly, uh, for next, you have the lattice formation. So, some uh, environment or mga conditions. First is ionic strength, pH, and temperature. Now, these... Um, uh, these factors can uh, depends on the type of antibodies po na Example for pH, na ubang antibodies na ganahan sila na acidic ang pH para mas mo enhance ilahang formation. Whereas for temperature, na po uban na ganahan na colder ang temperature, na po uban na ganahan na medyo hot, alright, para mas mas chada ilang lattice formation. Alright, we'll get that, I think, we'll discuss that next in the next slide. For ionic strength, um, uh, again, it still depends on parang the charges okay, around the antigens and antibodies um, that could enhance or that could decrease no, the formation of the lattice formation. Okay? The formation of the lattice formation. The formation of the lattice. Okay? <laughs> All right. Ayan. And next, the nature of the antibody, of course, concentration. If gamay rai muhang antibody, then of course, the uh, ability to form the lattice is not there or medyo low po ng ability. All right? Whereas kung daghan, um, dadya po yung chance na dili. <laughs> Masa ang equal, dapat equal lagi, di ba? Zone of equivalence, di ba? Atong pro-zone, post-zone. Okay. And the class, ability to act as bridges, size, valence. So, still the same reason with this. No, example, IgM. So, IgM is really efficient for agglutination, di ba? Recall in our um, katupang intro sa antigen antibodies, kinsa tong, kinsa dyo tong like, um, efficient, pinaka-efficient for agglutination, it's IgM. Because IgM has a lot of va valences, daho pagyud siya, no? So, daghan kay siyang chances, or taas ang chance, or yeah, daghan chances for uh, for it to bind to a lot of antigens, and makabridge po siya sa gap in between duha ka antigens, in a way. So, dali ra kayo ma-form ang lattice formation. Diba? Nag-gets na? Kaya mara magog, from one antigen to another antigen, daho man ang antibody na bridge ang gap between the two, di ba? Ya daghan pagyud siyang pwedeng mabindan, so dali kaayo maka-connect ng uban because again, dako kaayo hang coverage. Okay? Muna siya ang point sa IgM. So munang paspas pud mo gamao glatis formation. All right. Okay, ayan. And um, nature of the antigen of course, concentration. So the same with the antibody, di ba? If gamay ang antigen, false negative. If taas pud ang antigen, uh, false negative in comparison to the antibody, di ba? So, muna ang, ang ato jung um, goal is zone of equivalence. Approximately equal silang tanan. Alright, and surface charge, uh, because your antigen mismo itself, depending on its composition, if iyahang outer composition, example, mga acids, which are generally negatively charged, so nasa negative charge, so mag-repel sila sa each other, no? And ang antibodies, for example, negatively charged, no? So, mag-repel sa each other that could um, uh, decrease the ability to form the lattice. Alright? Okay, ayan. Now, we go now to some steps, no? Or on how to enhance your lattice formation. Uh, first is your particle surface charge using LISS or albumin. 
Now, you will encounter these reagents again in blood banking, <laughs> LISS or albumin. Now, what it does is, example, you have, example, your RBC ang antigen, and then uh, you have also an antibody. Now, your, your RBCs, mango, they have an outer charge of negative. Because, again, of um, sialic acid, di ba? If I'm not mistaken, or if sa inyong hima, di ba, marag na sialic acid sa iyahang surface. Now, acids are generally negatively charged. Now, what it does is, generally, daghang sialic acid, no? So, it provides a negatively charge. What it does, it creates a potential known as your uh, zeta potential. Alright? And this zeta potential, of course, if mag repels sa each other with another negative. Okay? So, munang, uh, pwedeng dili makaform of lattice formation. Let's say, another RBC din. So, negative. Ayan. So, mag sa each other. Alright. Now, your LISS or albumin, what it does is, iyahang gina-reduce ang zeta potential ani. Alright. So, para mas mo dugol sa each other, mas easy ra mo form og lattice formation. Mas easy ra mo form og lattice. Okay. Alright. Na gets lang LISS or albumin. You'll have that in your blood bank. Okay. Alright. Next, for increasing viscosity, we add dextran or PEG. Because what it does is, it removes water, alright, between the two antigens, alright, or around cells, and which allow them to be in close proximity to each other. Marag in a way, same raani, alright. But it does is, because of water, alright, para, para mas mo closer sila sa each other, kwa nato ang water, butangan nato ang induction or polyethylene glycol. Because again, why? We want the cells to be closer, alright, para, of course, which now facilitates the easier formation of the lattice, okay? Alright. Next, we have use of enzymes. Now, these enzymes, these enzymes, <laughs> sila say may hang, um, uh, use or yahang main role is that it decreases the negative charge surface of, example, your RBCs or the surface of the antigens by um, changing the configuration, it change ang something sa surface, whatever. But the ultimate goal is that magamay ang charges, no? And magamay ang repulsion, meaning ang ilahang pag repel sa each other, therefore mas mo close sila. Alright? Which then facilitates now the formation of the lattice. Okay? So, for example, bromelin. Bromelin comes from uh, pineapple, yes. And papain, by the name itself, comes from papaya. Alright. Trypsin is, fa I think, ikan na siya cow. I'm not sure lang. And ang fisin, nalimot ko asa. But, yes. So, pineapple. Uy, mga umiinom dyan ng pineapple juice. Nga no, guys? Why? Why do you drink pineapple juice? Kung naay mga bookings. Charot! <laughs> Check. Uh, okay, alright. So, another chika na siya. Use of enzymes. Okay. Alright. Ayan. And next, you have agitating and centrif centrifuging. Of course, um, it's self-explanatory. That is why in your blood bank, um, mga tests, example, na dyan yung centrifugation. Why? Because... We want the cells to be in much closer to each other. Or, cell-to-cell -cell contact is increased. Therefore, mas dali na silang maka-create o lattice formation. Dili na kaayod, like, layo. No, example, akong IgM, niya na ang usa ka-antigen. Na ang usa ka-antigen diri. Dili na sila layo. Because of centrifugation, mas mapaduol. Okay? So, mas easy na lang mo form o mga links. Okay? Alright. So, agitating and centrifuging. You, a lot of your BB na... Um, tests, t test methods, and laboratory um, tests or laboratory activities uh, use centrifugation. Okay, all right. And because again, why increase cell-to-cell -cell contact? Okay, and next you have altering pH. Because again, as mentioned kanina, some of your antibodies, example, anti-M and anti-P1, they like acidic pH, meaning, mas mo function sila if acidic ang pH or mas mo create or mas easy for them to create the lattice in an acidic pH. So, anti-M and anti-P1, these are antibodies, okay, uh, that are naturally occurring, or it could be, um, when you say naturally occurring, na produce siya sa mong body. But this is anti-M and anti-P1. Uh, you'll have that again in your blood bank. Uh, uh, this is part of the blood group, P blood group. Yeah, P uh, blood group. If I'm not mistaken, guys, ha, kay daghan kayong blood group, daghan yung blood group sa blood bank, you may think na ABORH right na, ah, you thought wrong. <laughs> daghan pang other blood groups. Yeah, I think it's now 36 karon. You have the major and the minor, and you'll discuss that in your blood bank. So, yes, guys. Okay, all right. Ayan, so the P blood group, these are the, an the antibodies found there, anti-M and anti-P1. And again, ilang characteristic is that they like acidic pH. So, um, if you are suspecting in the sample na ay in anin antibodies, so you acidify the serum or the sample para mas mo enhance ang activity sa mong antibodies. Alright? Okay. And lastly, for temperature, 
IGG generally they work for um, uh, 30 to 37 degrees Celsius, and for IGM it's cold. Yes, gonna show colder, 4 to 27 degrees Celsius. All right. So uh, since IGM is agglutination, na yung bang test sa inyong blood bank. Example, I think sa inyong hang cross matching ba to? Um, there is three three stages man ang cross matching. There is a step there that you perform the test on room temperature because you want to detect uh, IgM na mga harmful antibodies that could be transmitted or that could be transfused to the recipient. All right? Okay, so that's an example of that. Okay, so for IgG, generally, body temperature, mo agglutinate na siya or ganan siya body temperature for agglutination. But for IgM, it's quite lo lower temperature. Room temperature or 4 degrees Celsius, good. Okay. All right. Ayan, now... Uh, Yes, for uh, for grading or yeah, for grading agglutination reactions, we start first with your tube, no? Ayan. So after centrifugation, na I red cell example RBC, red cell na nahita bo na like button sa obos. What you do is you shake, all right? Uh, you'll have that again in your blood bank again, no? Uh, blood bank uh, sa imong tube, you shake, and then after shaking, if na intact ang na I one solid clump, you grade that as four plus. Then if na large clumps, 3+, plus, uh, smaller clumps, 2+, plus, barely discernible, 1+, plus, and smooth suspension, that's negative. All right. And there's a table for that, yes. So kung no agglutinate, okay, ilang tawa ni mong cells, and ang supernatant po, or katong liquid, if dark or turbid homogenous, that is zero. Uh, many tiny and many free cells, dark turbid jump on a supernatant, that's weak, W+. Plus. Many small agglutinates, many free, turbid na yung supernatant, that's 1 plus. Many medium size, moderate number, clear na supernatant, that's 2 plus. Several large, few free cells, uh, clear, that's 3 plus. And lar basta na adjoy, basta mabilin kayo, sa radyo ka large clump, bahalagi mo siya ishake, okay? Um, and then clear po ng supernatant, that's 4 plus. Alright, so again, this grading, paki memorize, paki. Memorized by heart because this is the grading that you will follow in blood typing, in you hang um, uh, Coombs test, no? in you hang cross matching, tanan tanan. Tanang agglutination reactions, muni siya mo grading. Okay? <laughs> Alright, kanay mo nga plus plus. Usually, ang lisud i differentiate kay ang, the, ang, weak, ang weak plus and one plus. Or ang W plus o one plus. Usually, ako paglanto na lang ana is ang ilahang supernatant. If dark, turbid, pag yun siya, like red ka ayo, no? So weak. And then, Ko medyo turbid na per lighter ng color, then that could be one plus. All right, okay. So please, please, paki sa ulo, paki memorize, and it's much easier put if na I picture. Okay, all right. So I think you'll have that in your blood bank then. Okay, all right. Now for slide, uh, for slide naman of course kana mag blood typing ta. It's easy, strong agglutination, uh, weak agglutination, and of course negative. So kabante na mo ano no? For slide, guys, we don't grade the reactions, ha? <laughs> because I have an experience in my hospital before, did ako mo mention kung asa, na ginagrade ang slide. Like, you grade it by 4+, plus, 3+, plus. but kanang grading, guys, it's reserved for tube method, okay? Ang slide, igo ragita mo ingon na plus or negative, or like positive with agglutination or negative with agglutination. Whereas, ang tube, ato good siyang i-grade, okay? Please. Okay, but if maasain mag hospitals na tay grade og slide, ayaw na po siya, ayaw na po i, ayaw na po kung pangaway og like head sa head sa section. Kay I think ilan nang gifollow sa lang SOP, so follow na lang po. But theoretically, sa tube method lagi tama grading. And for slide, it's only positive with agglutination or negative with agglutination. Okay, all right. Now for the uh, next video, we'll now discuss the different types of agglutination reactions. So as you can see, medyo marami. All right, but I hope naman <laughs> na ma-discuss na ko siya um, clearly. Alright, so thank you dears and I'll see you on our next video.